Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3, back with another kicking movie reaction review. I told you guys I was going to do this one. I told you I was going to do this one. Recently we did Plan 9 from Outer Space, and now we are doing the remake simply titled Plan 9 from 2015. Yeah. Um, let's, 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 let's give you some information. It's about an hour 43 minutes. Uh, there are several places to watch it. You can watch it on Tubi, Pluto TV, Vudu, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, Google Play Movies and TV, and iTunes. It's got a 4.4 out of 10 on IMDb. It's got a 33% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 2.4 out of 5 on Letterboxd. 61% of Google users like the movie. Uh, initial release February 18th, 2015, director John Johnson, what a name, right? Narrated by Mr. Lobo, screenplay John Johnson, and it credits Ed Wood. Um, I think that's just an honorary credit, obviously. Uh, and producers John Johnson and Raul Takar. Uh, starring Brian Krause, Conrad Brooks, John Johnson... And James Rolfe, many of you might know him as the Angry Video Game Nerd. Uh, I haven't watched much of his stuff, to be honest, because I don't like... I don't watch movie... I don't watch movie reviews. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that they'll uh, taint my view of the movie before I watch it. Because if I haven't watched the film, I feel like it'll spoil it or uh, taint it for me and kind of influence my opinion before I watch it. And if I've already seen the film, then I don't want to watch a movie review for it because I've already seen it. Uh, that's just how I feel. I don't. I don't. I don't really feel like watching. I mean, lots of people watch movie reviews even if they've already seen the movie because they want to hear other people's opinions and maybe talk about it in the comments. But uh, I usually do that more on like Discord or Twitter or something. It's the place I do that, not YouTube. I just do it in a different place. Is all. Uh, quick read up. Aliens invade the small town of Nilbog by resurrecting the recently dead. The townsfolk are the world's only chance to stop the aliens before they use the dead to take over the planet. Yes. Um, I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like it. I thought it was going to be just, I thought it was going to be a full on parody of Plan 9 from Outer Space. I thought it was going to be a full on parody. I was told it was a full-on parody, but it, it seems to me like the stuff I read that made me want to watch the film wasn't accurate. Like, one person was like, it's a great film. Uh, Ed Wood would have loved it. I don't think Ed Wood would have loved it. Uh, I think Ed Wood wanted something more serious, and I don't know if Ed Wood would have approved of all the child death, perhaps. A lot of children die in this movie, and you see it. The opening credits, a zombie jumps in a cradle and eats a baby. Opening credits. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of child death in this film. On one hand, it's like most movies are straight up afraid to kill a child for any reason, especially innocent ones. So, uh, that's kind of like... Hey, you know, this this movie's willing to take chances. It's willing to go there, you know? Uh, but at the same time, it's like, that's going to turn a lot of people off from this movie. And I don't really blame them. I don't really blame them. Uh, I mean, if, if you like watching children get killed, you shouldn't be watching movies. You should be in a psychiatric facility. But uh, it's supposed to make you uncomfortable. You're not supposed to like it, so it works. Uh... This film does add a lot of stuff to this movie that I think kind of expanded on things from the first film that I thought was really cool. Like, they kind of explained how the resurrection process works more. That was really cool. Um, we actually got to see kind of the alien form of the aliens. They don't just look like humans. Like, in the original, they just happen to look like humans because it would have cost too much money to make them look like aliens. And in this one, they have, like, human disguises they can use, but they can only look like one certain guy and one certain woman. Uh, which I thought was pretty cool, too, because you can always tell who the alien is. Uh, you know, that was pretty cool. But it has an alien form, and then um, there's, like, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to tell you everything. 
in case you want to watch it. But there's a bunch of stuff added to this film that kind of expanded on the original that I thought was really cool. Um, another thing I was told about this movie that didn't seem to be true was that it's a straight-up parody. It's not. I was expecting, like, a big parody when I went into this. Like, basically a full-blown comedy. It's got jokes, and James Rolfe's character is in a completely comedic role. He is the comedic relief. Uh, most of the characters are serious, though. Like, I... I don't know. Like, I was told this was a horror comedy, but it didn't feel like a horror comedy. I was told it was a parody. It's definitely not a parody. It's more like an homage, but... It's not a parody. Most of the jokes fall flat as well. Uh, the special effects are fine. Like, for an indie film, I'm totally down with the special effects. It's mostly practical, and it's CG where it needs to be. Works for me. Um, the plan is also much bigger. Because uh, remember, in the original movie, they resurrect three people, and then they just don't resurrect anyone else, and they let those three people wreak havoc. And it's like... You want to destroy all humans with three undead people. But in this one, it's actually really cool because there are these pulses of energy that go out and each pulse goes further and further and resurrects more recently dead. It can only resurrect uh, people who have been dead within a month who have intact hearts. Their hearts have to work because the signal is sent to the hearts and then the aliens control them. And there was actually this really cool scene where they used logic to figure out that the zombies were being controlled. Um... Because they were like, it's not resurrecting animals. It's not, um, they aren't targeting anything but humans specifically. The zombies aren't targeting animals. And also, with each burst, if one of the zombies is already active when another burst happens, that burst ups the zombie's intelligence. So the zombies start using tools and stuff. Like, there's one point where some of the zombies, after a pulse, get smarter and start using a battery ram. There's one where one tries to break a window with a slender, cinder block. Slender block. <laughs> That's Slenderman's cement company. <laughs> uh, speaking of unfunny jokes, you know. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff added to this film. The Plan 9 in this movie is actually the Earth Scientist's Plan 9. Um, and the aliens do also show up to destroy humans because humans are about to create a weapon that's going to be way too dangerous for the whole universe, just like in the last film. Uh, zombie effects were all right. Alien effects were good. Uh, now let's talk about the acting. It's absolute shit. All right? It's absolute garbage. But it was in the first one, too. And if this was a full-on parody, I would have assumed this bad acting was on purpose. But here's the thing, right? It's got... This film has too many main characters, for one thing. It's it's kind of disjointed, and it's constantly going between all these different places. Like, there's too, a little too much going on uh, in this movie. Uh, but I can look past that, honestly. That didn't bother me too much. But Brian Krause, who I believe I've seen in movies before, he plays Jeff Trent. He's not a bad actor in my mind. I don't think he's a bad actor at all. You know? Uh, I en I enjoy his work. I do. He's like a discount Michael Keaton, kind of. Um, his acting was totally fine, and then everyone else's was shit to varying degrees. Our female lead is one of the worst actors I've ever seen in my entire life. The scientist whose grandmother dies at the beginning of the film. One of the absolute worst actors I've seen, and probably one of the worst actors alive. Um... She was absolutely terrible. Her lines were all delivered without emotion, and they were so dry. And she just... Oftentimes she spoke a little too fast, too. Like, eh, she was the worst. She was the absolute worst. The worst, worst, worst. We also have uh, some of the zombies. They're called zombies in this movie. They were called ghouls in the original. Uh, they're called zombies in this film. And I'm glad they don't adhere to normal zombie rules, because I've said this in many videos. I'm not a zombie fan. I don't really like zombie movies. Um, the zombies in this movie run. I prefer slow zombies. Uh, but the, the zombies in this movie run. These are very creative for zombies. Most zombies are just, oh, it's a virus. Okay, they're here. And voodoo zombies, I think, are cooler. 
but there's kind of a racial connotation with voodoo zombies so that's you you, you don't really want to do voodoo zombies anymore like in king of the zombies and white zombie which I haven't seen White Zombie in a long time, but I remember King of the Zombies was a very, very, very racist film. So you don't really want to do voodoo zombies. People need newer... I mean, this isn't an original idea because Ed Wood did it forever ago, but people need fresher ideas on how zombies are created because virus, that's not cutting it anymore. That's not cutting it. It's too generic. It's overused. Find a different way to make zombies. Aliens making the zombies... I am fucking down with that. The concept of this movie, 100% down with. The story, good. Uh, yeah, I didn't think the story in this was bad. Um, the acting was terrible. And let's talk about the audio in this film. It wasn't like Bigfoot Wars level bad. But it was like really fucking bad. Some characters were, like, way quieter than others. Like, in the scenes when we were with the police officers and the scientists, those scenes were much louder than the scenes at, like, the convenience store. Where they were, because there's, like, the police officers running around town, and the people trapped in the convenience store are the two main plot lines in this movie, and they eventually kind of meet up. Because... Uh, there's a husband and wife in the movie, and the husband's at the convenience store, and the wife is with the police officers. So they have to come together so that couple can be reunited. Um, the convenience store, you can barely hear anything anyone's saying, but it's, like, completely clear when you're with the cops on the street. It's That's just that's just poor editing. That's I don't know if it's due to editing or just how they captured the sound on set. I mean, editing probably would have helped fix it a little bit. But I had my computer... I watched this on my laptop. I usually watch Prime Video on my laptop. Because one, I do watch parties a lot. And two, I can I like to look at the trivia on the sidebar. Um, in this movie, I had my computer volume all the way up and Prime Video volume all the way up. And there were characters I just couldn't hear. There was, in the film, this is a big spoiler, there was a mother... Uh, who killed her own daughter with poison so that her daughter would not have to possibly suffer a zombie death. But she did it, like, way before it would have been necessary. She, like, did it when they were relatively safe. So she was a murderer. And then they made her feel guilty about it, and she stripped naked. I don't know why she stripped naked, uh, but to kill herself. And, and she just killed herself via zombie. And then, of course, the daughter came back uh, as a zombie. Uh, so she got to get killed twice. Yay. Not yay. But, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, 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 I never heard a single line that woman said. So I had to put subtitles on. I had to put on closed captions. On Amazon Prime, anyways, the closed captions don't match the film. The closed captions are like three lines ahead of what everyone's saying. So that's not cool. Uh, lots of the music is like too upbeat or uplifting to be scary, but also it wasn't done in a comedic way, so I just, I just don't see how this is a horror comedy. Because the only really... There may be like two really comedic characters, one who's like a jerk who's at the convenience store, he's an actor, and then uh, James Rolfe's cop character. Like, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see how it's a horror comedy. It's like, it feels like it tried to be more sci-fi action. Because, like, they don't really try to make it scary at all. It doesn't seem like they're really trying to make it very funny. They have, like, two comedic relief characters, but, you know, the film itself isn't, like, funny. But they're, like, driving around shooting and stuff, and they do, like, this big assault on the alien's base, and... If I had to classify this movie, I'd classify it as sci-fi action. I would not classify it as horror or comedy. I don't know where the fuck that comes from. Um, I mean, it's sci-fi either way, you know. Uh, zombies brought about by science are automatically sci-fi, and aliens are pretty much automatically sci-fi as well. 
So it's sci-fi either way, but I would put sci-fi above most of the things. I'd say it's sci-fi action, not horror comedy. Uh, maybe the creators intended a horror comedy and just did a straight-up shit job. I don't know, but I've heard so much good stuff about this movie. And then I just... None of it was true. People were telling me like, oh, I was really looking forward to James Rolfe in the film, but he's only in it for 20 minutes. Bullshit! He's in the entire movie! He's one of the main characters, only in it for 20 minutes. Like, all the commentary I've seen about this movie, like, lots of the things they said about the movie just are factually untrue. So I'm like, did people actually watch this movie for rev before reviewing it? Is this like a Captain Marvel situation where, like, a bunch of misogynistic dudes just, like, gave it bad reviews uh, before it even came out to lower its score. But, like, the opposite, where people are, like, high-praising it, but, like, the details aren't... I don't know. But, uh, either way, watch a film before you maybe, you know, type your opinions about it on Twitter. Also, if you want to watch this movie... You have to watch the original Plan 9 for Outer Space first or you won't get it. Because, like, three of the zombies are, like, just the three ghouls from the beginning of the film. They're, they're the three ghouls from the beginning of the film. And you won't get the opening. You won't understand the opening scene in this movie if you haven't watched Plan 9. You won't even understand it. Uh, but, like, because the three ghouls in the first film, there was, like, Tor. Uh, he played, like, this huge ghoul. And then I think her name is Vampira. She played the female ghoul with the abnormally small waist. And then Bela Lugosi, who was completely wasted in that film. Poor guy. No speaking or anything. Bela Lugosi deserved to speak. He's my favorite actor of all time. And he was basically just old man ghoul in a cape. And this movie has all three. Two of them they tried to make look exactly like the ones from the original. And then the Bela Lugosi one doesn't look anything like Bela Lugosi. So, like, it starts off with the scientist's grandmother's funeral. The grandmother is obviously played by a young woman, and they don't even try to make her look old. She looks the same age as her granddaughter. Like, I, you, I, like I'm suspending my disbelief a lot in this film, but I can't suspend my disbelief about that. And she's the kind of vampira one with the long black nails and stuff. And then the, her husband kills himself. He's supposed to be the Bela Lugosi one. He's dressed up like a vampire for Halloween. So he's got a cape on. Uh, but it's like a cheap Halloween cape instead of the very elegant, fancy kind of one that Bela Lugosi wore in the film. It's just a cheap Halloween one. Uh, I think the whole reason this movie takes place on Halloween is simply to give him an excuse to wear a cape. Even though you should never apologize for wearing a cape, they should come back in fashion I would wear a cape every day. Capes are cool as hell. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't look anything like Bela Lugosi, but he dies because he hangs himself, you know, because his wife just died, um, and then his granddaughter, like, refuses to come comfort him. She's like, oh, I'm not ready to face these emotions, so I'm going to go to work. I don't even want to think about her death or anything. I, I don't want to face these emotions, which is something people do in real life. I actually, I have a funeral sciences degree. Part of that's grief counseling and et cetera. So it's like um, that's, that's a real thing people do. But his granddaughter refused to come comfort him, and then children were too scared of him on Halloween to take candy from him. So the mofo hung himself with an electrical cord in his house. And then, like, you know, the wave brought him back to life so he's walking around does the cape in front of his face thing like Bela Lugosi but not as much they actually so the actor who is portraying the Bela Lugosi character counterpart in this film is treated much better than Bela Lugosi was treated because he gets a speaking part you actually get to feel for him um like you feel sad for him when he's hanging himself you're like oh that poor old man like you actually do care about the old man and he hangs himself, and you're like, oh, man. And then there's one who looks like a Taurus character, like the big inspector that died. I think he was another inspector that died. He, like, like a zombie attacked him, and he fell on a grave, and then the headstone fell in on him and killed him. I thought that was a pretty cool kill, actually. I thought that was a really cool kill, with the gravestone killing him instead of the zombie. That was pretty cool. And then he rises up, and he's in makeup to look exactly like the character. 
beast of yucca flats looking ass. Uh, so two of them, they tried to make him look just like him, and then the old man, he's got like long gray hair and like a long gray beard, which Bela Lugosi didn't have. So they didn't even try to make him really look like Bela Lugosi other than the cape. But uh, there is actually just one part in the film where he kills someone and his dead wife is there too and they see each other and then they like walk around holding hands almost like they remember that they were married. And I thought that was so cute! And then when the anti-pulse at the end of the film goes and it like knocks out all the zombies, they're holding hands in the graveyard and they fall together. And I was like, I like that. I like that. You know? So, were there things about this movie... I liked? Absolutely. Were there things about this movie that I really didn't like? Absolutely. Um, I would say it's a bad film overall. I feel like they should have gone either full serious, like full serious film, or just full comedy, like 100% parody. I feel like it should have gone either one of those ways. But, uh... You know, I didn't like it. I, I think the people that praise it are just people that love the original so much that they feel like they have to like this one. And that's not true, you know? If you don't like it because you think it's a bad film, that's fine. If you're uncomfortable watching it because of all the child killing, that's fine. It also... So in a previous review for Bone Jangles 2017, I talked about using sexual imagery as a crutch in movies and how horror films are the most guilty of that this film also uses a bit of sexual imagery as a crutch not much but but there are there are times when it's like why 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 is there an up close shot of bare tits right now like i know this woman's being killed by a zombie but why is the camera on exclusively her tits can you explain that to me like, the woman who stripped naked to get killed by the zombies, that I understand. Like, that felt artistic, you know? Because, like, she's committed this horrible sin, and now she's exposing herself, stripping herself bare, uh, you know, showing her sin and ready to face, like, retribution, ready to face justice. Her stripping naked before committing suicide by zombie made sense artistically. But super up close shot of a woman's boobs while she's being killed. Is this a fucking 80s film? Come on, we've moved past that, guys. We've moved past that. At least I thought we had. But that is it for Plan 9 from 2015. Thank you all very much for your support. If you're a big Plan 9 from Outer Space fan, you know, you, you can give it a chance. I'm not telling you to not watch it. I can see how people could enjoy this movie. I just didn't. That's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, including Patreon, where you can help us make more great videos. Most of that will react. Most of the stuff from Patreon will go towards, like, short films and stuff. It won't go towards my action figures and movies. I'll pay for those myself. You guys shouldn't pay for those. But, uh, like, short films and stuff, all the money from Patreon goes to that. So that's it. Thank you all once again for your support. And you can call me in sync, because I'm saying, bye-bye!